Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Barbara. Now, thanks for calling, but tonight is out, Angel. Uh, I have to teach some gangsters that you can't get away with murder. Especially since the murder they want to get away with is mine. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novel. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The case of the substitute target. Before we join the Falcon for his latest adventure, I'd like to tell you about nine of the handiest little menu helpers you ever had in your kitchen. They're the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads, and they really are handy for making snacks and sandwiches, salad toppings and appetizers. All of the Kraft cheese spreads, the mild-tasting ones and the sharp-tasting ones, too, are delicious. And they're all the very finest quality because they're made by Kraft. The name Kraft on cheese or cheese foods means the very finest you can buy. So tomorrow, get several of the nine famous cheese spreads made by Kraft. Now, the case of the substitute target. Oh, bless you. It's Sunday night in the expensive New York apartment of Ed Rizzo. Rizzo is a fat, bald mobster who is at the moment taking a bad pushing around from a tall young man who seems definitely to mean business. All right, Rizzo, who is it? Lay off. When you talk... No, you don't. Oh, my finger. You shouldn't have reached for that drawer. What are you looking for, a gun? Well, here's one, only I'll hold it. There's no use looking around for protection, Rizzo. I'm your protection. You know that. Only right now, I'm not protecting. Travers, if you'd only listen to me. I want the boss, the top boss. Now, who is he? Where can I find him? I told you, I'm the boss. You work for me. You You don't seem to understand, Rizzo. I don't work for you. Not anymore. I want the boss, not a cheap stooge. Do you, Travers? Who are you? I didn't know anybody was here. You weren't supposed to know anybody was here. Now, stop waving that gun. You better do as I say, unless you want to find out if I'd really put a bullet in your stomach. Hurry up, drop it. All right, all right, don't. I'll drop it. That's better. Pick it up, Rizzo. Yeah. All right. Now, just what's been going on here. You're the boss, aren't you? What gives you that idea? Looking at Rizzo. All right, I'm the boss. So what? So from now on, I'm working for you. I'm tired of taking orders from Rizzo. Ah, uh-huh. and what happens when you get tired of taking orders from me? Well, I won't. I, I know I couldn't run the mob myself. At least not yet. Listen to the park, all right, kid. Now here's where you get yours for getting smart. Oh, cut it out! Hold it, Rizzo. Let go of him. We gotta teach these punks to stay in line. Then start by staying in line yourself. Take your hands off him. But Mister, do Turner. as I tell you. Okay. Boy has initiative. I like that. Tell me, Travers, how did you find out Rizzo wasn't head man? He could never make up his mind. He always had to think it over. Ah. Only he wasn't thinking, he was asking. 
Well, he's got a head on his shoulders, Rizzo. I think I can use him. But Mr. Dunlap... By the he... way, Travers, I hope you haven't mentioned your deductions to anyone. I wouldn't care to have word get around. What, are you kidding? I look out for Artie Travers. Anybody else wants to get to the top, let him do his own figuring. Good boy. That's the spirit I like. You've got yourself a job. I have a suite at the Hotel Grayson. Be there tomorrow at 10. Yes, sir. Well, that's all. See you tomorrow. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh... I'll be seeing. Right. Tomorrow at 10. Mr. Dunlap, how are we going to keep guys in line if you let punks get away with that He's kind of... He's not getting away with anything, Rizzo. What you told and him... And now I'm telling you. He's not getting away with anything. Not even his life. <laughs> Baby, did I pull a deal tonight? Little Lottie is going places. I'm glad to hear it. You bet you're glad. It's sables for you, baby. Uh, and for... Uh-oh. What's the matter? Maybe I made a mistake. What, what do you mean? What sort of mistake? Just a minute. I want to turn this corner. Uh, See if they do, too. They? Who? Yeah. There they are. We're being Followed? Followed? Why? What does it mean? If that's who I think it is, it could mean plenty. I gotta shake them. What do you think they want? Me. They're speeding up, too. Yeah, hang on, baby. We're gonna take another turn. Uh, what's it all about? Never mind. Just watching back. See if they make it. All right. Yes, here they come. Oh, they're gaining. Can't you go any faster? No, I'm giving a road to take. They're still gaining. We'll never make it. Get down on the floor, baby. Well, what are you gonna... Do like I tell you. Quick. All right. Oh! <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm looking for Michael Waring, the Falcon. I was told I could find him here. You were told right. Come in. Thank you. I thought you'd have an office. Isn't it rather unusual for a detective to work out of his apartment? I'm a rather unusual detective. So I've heard. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Well, Lorna, what can I do for you? You know my name? Sure. Lorna March. Uh, you are unusual. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit, Angel. You were all over the front pages. Oh, that's when I was in the hospital. I didn't see you. Yes, but I did. You're not the type to ignore. I'm not that unusual. Uh, thank you. Then you know the police grill me about Art's connections. They think I know something that I'm holding back. Mm -hmm. But it's not so. I only knew Art a short while. I didn't know he was a gangster. If I had, I wouldn't have had anything to do with him, believe me. You don't have to sell me. But it's true. He, he told me that he was in some sort of manufacturing business. All right, Lorna. You don't know anything about Art Travers. You don't know who killed him or why he was killed. That's right. Only the police won't believe me. They think I'm holding back. And now what worries me? Suppose the people who killed Art get the same idea. You think they might go gunning for you to shut you up? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. That's why I came to you. I'll pay your fee gladly. Well, first of all, let's put you where they can't get at you. I'll take you to a hotel, make sure we're not followed. You stay in your room and don't open the door to anyone. But I can't stay locked in a hotel room indefinitely. No, just till we get things rolling. What things? Or maybe the killers will lose interest in you if we give them something else to shoot at. What, for instance? Me. Homicide, Sergeant Corbett speaking. It's your lucky day, Corbett. This is Mike Waring. Goodbye, Waring. Uh, hold it. I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. I've already got a headache. The Art Travis killing by any chance? You've been listening at keyholes. <laughs> Naturally, in my profession. All right, Waring, what do you want? I got no time for idle chit-chat. I want you to do me a favor. I told you I got no time. Oh, for this you have. You'll love it. What makes you think so? It might get me killed. <laughs> All of a sudden, I find myself strangely interested. Tell me more. <laughs> reveal that letters to Travers' apartment indicate that shortly before his murders, Travers employed private detective Mike Waring, known as the Falcon. 
wearing is wanted for questioning as to the nature of his work for Travers. It is believed that this may have a direct bearing on the killing, especially since Waring has disappeared since the killing. It is not known whether Waring is in hiding. Hello, Joey. Mike Waring. Hey, didn't you hear? I mean, well, don't you know the law's looking for you? Uh, that's why I'm looking for you. Huh? Have one on me, Joey. What are you drinking? You name it, I'll drink it. Okay. Bartender, double scotch for my pal. Gee, that's, that's pretty swell, Mike. Uh, what's cooking? What can I do you for? I just thought you might let me hole up in your place till things cool off. Oh? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, sure, Mike. <coughs> sure, anytime. Well, thanks, Joey. Well, I'd better get right up there. The uh, sooner I'm out of circulation, the better. Here, this will take care of your drink. Uh, thanks. Hey, hey, just a second. Here's the keys. Oh, right. I'll, I'll be up a little later. All right, Joey. So long. So long, Mike. Hey, uh, all the rest of the drink, Red. I'll be right back. Rizzo? Yes? Uh, Joey Jonas. Uh, I was just calling. I, I might happen to know where you could find Mike Waring. Oh? Uh, what's it worth? Come on up. We'll talk about it. Okay. I'll be right over. <laughs> Come in, Joey. Uh, yeah, Mr. Rizzo. Now, what's this about you knowing where to find Waring? Well, uh, you see, he, he comes to me, asks me to help uh, hide him out. Oh, he comes to you? Yeah, he says, well, I... Hey, come on, I'm on the go. What does Waring come to you for? I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you. Hey, don't hit me. You a pal of Waring's? I know him, sort of. You know him, sort of, but he goes to you when he's in a jam. Well, I guess he figured that, well, nobody think about him going to me. If he went to one of his real pals, a friend will, well, you know... Maybe. Hey, look, I, I'm telling you where to find him, ain't I? You better. Well, doesn't that prove I'm leveling with you? All right, Joey. But you said, well, you know, uh, I'm going to get paid, ain't I? We'll talk about that after I find Waring. Where is he? Well, the dough first. God, my arm! Where's Waring? But I... Ow! <laughs> At my place. <laughs> my uh, place. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, but don't forget you promised if I told you, you'd give me the dough. All right, Joey, turn it off. If Waring's there, you'll be taken care of. After we take care of Waring. Hello. Hello, Larkin. This is Rizzo. Yeah, Mr. Rizzo. Just thought you'd like to know. It pays to keep your customers happy. What do you mean? Just that I've got another job for you. Oh? It wouldn't be wearing, would it? How did you know? According to the papers, he was tied in with Travis. Yeah. Well, will you take care of it? I know where you can find him. You want him to get what Travis got? Yeah. But first, I want to talk to him, find out how much he knows. I want you to bring him here. That's not going to be so easy. A guy like the Falcon. You don't think you can handle it? I didn't say that. Then cut the alibis. Okay, Mr. Rizzo. I'll bring you wearing. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley he again, friends. Well, I guess Larkin plans to bring Mike to Mr. Rizzo, all right. Meanwhile, I'd like to bring you an idea. An idea for keeping the whole family pleased whenever they want a delicious snack. Just keep your refrigerator stocked with a glass or two of Kraft cheese and bacon spread. One of the nine delicious cheese spreads made by Kraft. Kraft cheese and bacon spread is perfect for snacks because it tastes so wonderful... And because it's velvety smooth for easy spreading on crackers or bread. 
Just wait till you taste this fine blend of mellow, sharp American cheddar cheese and hickory smoked bacon with that tantalizing sweet smoked flavor all through it. Mmm. You'll keep coming back for more. And snacks you make with Kraft cheese and bacon spread are snacks you can enjoy often. Because like all nine Kraft cheese spreads, Kraft cheese and bacon spread is wholesome dairy food made from only the finest ingredients. And for variety, try some of the nine other tempting Kraft cheese spreads. There's sharp old English brand, Roca brand, and full-flavored Smoke Hill, too. Look for them in the tulip Design drinking glasses in your choice of four gay colors. And remember, these are America's favorite cheese spreads. America's favorites because they're so delicious. So be sure you get the cheese spreads made by Kraft. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Rizzo ordered Larkin to deliver Mike Waring. Now, at the door of Joey Jonas's room, Larkin is ready to carry out his mission. Who is it? Joey sent me up. He thought you might be hungry. Got a couple of sandwiches for you. Ah, that's what I call a service. Just a second. All right, well, hey! I expected the gun, pal. That's why I was ready to jump you. Right. Double cross you. No, Joey, he didn't double cross you. He double crossed me, but I counted on it. Yeah, well, I. Oh. You won't do anything, pal. Not for a while. <laughs> Larkin, who gave you your orders? I want a lawyer. He wants a lawyer. Well, get him a lawyer, Corbett. Waring, he's just a professional trigger. I want the higher-ups. He's got to talk. With your charm, I don't see how he can resist you, but I have a hunch he will. You're wasting your time. Well, you got any suggestions, Waring? Yes, I told you. Get him a lawyer like he asked. Believe me, he doesn't want a lawyer. He says he does. Yeah, what'll a lawyer do? Spring him? Yeah, then the mob will rub him out to shut him up in case we want to pick him up again. We're doing him a favor keeping him here, believe me. Well, Corbett, every man to his taste. You're such a help. Now, that's gratitude for you. I bring you the trigger. I want the higher-ups. No satisfying some people. Like the chief, for instance. He's going to be screaming. What, in your pretty shell-like ear? The thought shudders. Oh, so long, Corbett. Where are you going, Waring? Your every wish is my command. I'm going looking for higher-ups. Hello, Joey. Huh? Falcon. Hey, stay away from me, Mike. Stay away. Come here, Joey. I'm warning you. Now, stay away or I'll let you have it with the spear bottle. Well, Joey, if you're so anxious to give me that bottle, I'll just take it up. Nope. Now, cut it out, Mike. Yeah, sure, as soon as I get this away from you. That's it. All right, Joey, now we talk. Oh, oh please, Mike. Don't be sore. You sick the gunman on me. Now, what are you so startled to see me walking around? I, I can explain. All right, explain. Well, I... He wanted it, and it's... I I guess I can't. As a matter of fact, you don't have to. I expected just what happened. Huh? Well, why? Because I know what a cheap rat you are. I suppose you wouldn't believe it. You're right, I wouldn't. There's no use crying over spilled gunman, Joey. So I'm willing to make a deal. Hey, what kind of a deal? I'm willing to forget the gunman, provided you tell me who hired him. Well, what if I don't know? You do know. You know plenty about what's cooking in mob circles. That's why I latched on to you in the first place. Uh, I can't say anything else, Mike. It's... Hey, don't hit me. I'm not going to hit you. I'm just going to explain something to you. Explain? Yeah. You can deny it if you want to, but this is the way I see it. You tipped off a mob that I was at your place. They sent around Larkin to get rid of me. Oh, Mike, But that's look, just I... what I counted on. I was waiting for him. Now he's in the jug. Oh, it's not now, the what way do I'm... you think the mob thinks about that? They think you double-crossed them. Huh? Sure, can't you see it? Larkin walked into a trap. You laid the trap. No, I didn't. Well, that's the way it looks to them. And they won't sit still for that kind of an act. No, oh, Joey, I'm not going to hit you. I'll just leave you for the mob. Oh, oh what am I going to do? Well, you could help me round up the mob, put the finger on the boss. If they're behind bars, they can't touch you. Yeah, but, but if something goes wrong... So what? You couldn't be any worse off than you are. Think it over, Joey. Uh, uh, all right, Mike. Mike, I'll... I'll tell you all I know.
Stop pacing the floor, Rizzo. You make me dizzy. Should have heard from Larkin long ago. Something must have gone wrong. Something probably did. I understand Mike Waring is pretty sharp. Joey double-crossed me. That's what happened, Mr. Dunlap. Maybe. He sold me out to Waring. Now Waring has Larkin to clinch it. You'll get him to talk. What can Larkin say? He can tie me to the driver's job. We've got to get to Waring before he gets to the law. How? I don't know. But if we don't, Mr. Dunlap, we're sunk. Let's not underestimate the advantages of our method of operation, Rizzo. Huh? You're afraid Larkin will talk. But how much does he actually know? He knows me. Oh, true, but he doesn't know me. That's a big help. Uh, perhaps not to you. It is to me. Oh. And I don't count, I suppose. Oh, certainly you do. As long as you're an asset. Now perhaps you see why I insisted upon the breakdown in the organization. Larkin knows no one except you. You can name me, but you don't know any of my other lieutenants. Who cares about the other lieutenants? I'm thinking about me. Of course. But you see how the setup works. A chain, as it were. All that's necessary is to eliminate one link in the chain, and investigation comes to a dead end. So how are we going to eliminate Larkin? Waring's got him. True, Rizzo. Therefore, we're forced to move on to the next link. Huh? Hey, now, wait a minute. Sorry, Rizzo. Please, Mr. Dunlap, As don't, long don't... as we take care of the weakest link... I wouldn't talk. You don't have to worry about me. Too bad I have to do this myself, but there's no time, and I don't want to risk anything going wrong. Boss, look, I won't talk. Uh... Tell me, what good will I do here? I told you, Joey, it's not what good you'll do being with me. It's what harm you might do if I let you out of my sight again. Yeah, but, but Rizzo's going to be sore. Let me handle Rizzo. Let me get down. I, I'll wait downstairs. You'll wait right here. Uh, let's go. There's nobody here. You hope. I hear somebody in there. Well, it was just maybe somebody upstairs. I don't think so. I heard somebody moving around inside. Well, it, it's funny you don't come, then. Yeah, very funny. Well, Joey, I guess he's not here. Let's go. What's the... Shh, come on. Hey, you gone nuts. Yeah, sure. All right, Joey. This is far enough. Oh, what are we doing? Obviously, visitors aren't welcome. But maybe if we pretend to go... Or maybe if we really do go... Will you stop that? Well, what do we do? Just, just stand here in the hall? Yeah, for a minute. If nobody opens the door now, we'll have to try something else. Now, just be quiet. Okay. Here he comes. Oh, fine. You scared him back. What's the matter, Waring? Nobody home? Huh? Corbett, where'd you come from? Larkin finally cracked. Said Rizzo hired him, so here I am. Oh, good. There's something going on inside, but I... Hey, where's Joey? Joey? That must be the guy who just ducked down the stairs. I should have known he'd fade the second I turned my back. Well, maybe he doesn't matter for now. Look, we've got to get into Rizzo's. But that's not the kind of door you can break into. What's going on? That's what I'm trying to find out. I knocked at Rizzo's door. Nobody answered. But I could hear someone inside. So I hid and waited. Then somebody opened the door. But before I could see who it was, Joey chirped and the door slammed. Well, a door slammed in your face should be no new experience to you, Waring. All right, I'll waltz with you later, Corbett. Right now, this calls for a search warrant. And an acetylene torch. Now get on it, huh? going to get much out of Rizzo. Oh, except a collection of lead. Yeah. I wonder whoever was here didn't want to let me in. He probably just finished this job. Then while I was talking to you, he cleared out through the window. So we're right back where we started. Well, not exactly. You've got Rizzo. What's left of him. Now we've got to get the boy who plugged him. That's right, Corbett. Well, let's go see Ludovici Caffarello. Eh? Who is Ludovici Caffarello? A taxi driver. Yeah, what's he got to do with this case? Nothing, maybe. This is the kind of help he gives me. Okay, so I'll go see Ludovici Caffarello. Hold it, Waring. I don't know what gives, but I'm in no mood to take you patting yourself on the back in front of my face if this pays off and I'm out of it. <laughs> where does this Caffarello live? I don't know. Gets better and better. But I know where he works. So if you're coming, let's get moving. We've got work to do. <laughs> Well, 
This is Ed Hurley again, friends, and while Mike and Sergeant Corbett go about finding Mr. Coffarello, I'd like to help you find out about the nine most delicious cheese spreads I ever tasted. They're the nine famous cheese spreads made by Kraft. There are delightfully mild-tasting ones, such as Kraft Pineapple Cheese Spread, Kraft Olive Pimento Cheese Spread, and Kraft Relish Cheese Spread. And there are sharp-tasting ones, too, like Roca Cheese Spread, Smokell, and Kraft Limburger Cheese Spread. All of them are mighty good to eat. And they're all good for you to eat, too, because they're wholesome dairy foods made from only the finest ingredients. For quick, easy snacks and sandwiches, keep your refrigerator stocked with several of the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's an hour and a half since Mike threw the name Ludovici Caffarello into the case. Corbett is still wondering if it was a straight, fast one or a curve. Now the Falcon and Sergeant Corbett are waiting in an elaborately furnished living room for the answer, while the butler goes to announce them to the master of the house. A moment later, their host appears. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, which of you is Sergeant Corbett? I am, Dunlap. That's the guy, Corbett. What guy am I? The guy who slammed the door in my face at Rizzo's. When was this? A couple of hours ago. Tonight? I haven't been out tonight. We can prove you have. Your word against mine? Mine and Carfarello's. Who's Carfarello? The taxi driver who drove you here from Rizzo's. Hmm. When I heard the police wanted to see me, I, uh, I wondered what they wanted. Ah, you know. You better come along to headquarters. What charge? Suspicion of murder. I hate to disappoint you, gentlemen, but I have other plans. No, you don't. No gunplay. All I'm wearing. I don't think he will. Stop, don't laugh. Stop. Her. Oh, he's great for going through windows. Didn't even stop to open it. See him wearing? Yeah, he's on the fire escape. All right, Dunlap, that's as far as you go. There's his answer. Now, that's a two-way answer. Get him? No, he's too close to the building. But I've got him cornered. He can't get out to the stairs. Keep him pinned there. I'll go down for him. Yeah, right. He's two floors down... Corbett, wait a minute. What's wrong? He's taking a gamble. He's going over the rail. He's going to drop to the ground. It's three floors of solid concrete. If he makes it. Just a second. I can cover him from out here in the fire escape, even if he... There he goes. Watch him, wearing. It's all right, Corbett. I don't think he's going anywhere. He's not getting up. But you better get down there. I'll keep him covered just in case. So you and the sergeant found Rizzo's body, but then what? Well, I knew the murderer left the building right after Joey and I got there. Uh-huh. He went out the window while I was in the hall. Uh-huh. And I knew he'd be in a hurry to get out of the neighborhood. He might have taken a taxi, and since the taxi we arrived in was probably still out front... Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Well, you know, they have the driver's identification in the cab. I remember the name because it intrigued me. Ludovici Carfarello. So you called the taxi company and asked where you could find Carfarello. That's right. And he told us he picked up a fare near Rizzo's and gave us a description. We went to where he took the fare, gave the desk clerk a description, and he said it sounded like Dunlap. And that, with a little bluffing, was the end of the line. Do you think Dunlap's the head man of the mob? Seems to be. He's got a busted leg, but he'll be able to talk. Yep, looks like the mob's washed up. And Joey? <laughs> Probably on his bicycle heading for Texas. Oh, poor Joey. Oh, I wouldn't worry about him. Well, the main thing is I don't have to worry about myself anymore. No. Oh. No fun having to hide out from gangsters. Well, still, just to play safe, you uh, better keep a bodyguard with you for a while. You think there's still danger? I, I thought you said the mob was finished. Well, it probably is, but uh, why take chances? Well, do you know a bodyguard? Mm-hmm. Me. Oh. I'd stick real close, Lorna. I'm sure you would. You'd be well protected. I don't doubt it. There's only one thing that concerns me. What's that, Angel? Uh, who'd protect me from my protector? Hmm? In many parts of the country, winter means ice and snow, dangerous road conditions, and dangerous road conditions may mean a bad accident to you, so drive extra carefully. For safer driving, do these things. Adjust your car speed to the road and weather. Keep your windshield clear of snow and ice, fog and frost. Use tire chains on snow and ice. Brake slowly to avoid dangerous skidding. Keep well back of the car ahead. Whether you walk or drive, be careful. Remember, an accident doesn't always happen to 
someone else. The case of the Bellicose Boxer. The case of the Bellicose Boxer. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. And Mike Waring learns that when some fighters are knocked out, they may also be knocked off. So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Jerome Epstein, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Thayman was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear The Great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with a hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place. The Great Gildersleeve, next Wednesday evening, over most of these stations. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Hear Mr. and Mrs. Blanding's later today, then the big show on NBC. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Dolores. I'm glad you called. Uh, you'll have to count me out tonight. I'm going to the fight. Yeah, I know some of them are dull, Angel, but this one ought to be a killer. <laughs> The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novel. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon calls. The Case of the Bellicose Boxer. Now, the case of the bellicose boxer. It is early afternoon in New York, and the Stanford's gymnasium, the young man whom experts hail as the slickest thing to hit the ring since Benny Leonard dances around in the shower. His name is Freddie Lane. He looks as commanding as a Greek god, and Freddie has a manner to match. How about a towel, Steve? What? What'd you say, Freddie? What's the matter, you deaf? Let me have a towel. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Hey, yeah. Yeah. What'd you do with my robe? Hmm? Come on, Steve. Get with it. Oh, I'm sorry, Freddy. I guess I was thinking of something. Well, that's a novelty. Handing my robe, huh? Yeah, sure, Tim. Yeah? All right, what's eating you? Well, I don't like to annoy you with details. Ah, go ahead. You know a manager isn't supposed to keep any secrets from his fighters. Yes, yeah, that's just it, Freddy. As of 12 o'clock tonight, I'm no longer your manager. Uh, that's right. Your contract expires then, don't it? Yeah, <laughs> You forgot to sign the new one. No, I didn't forget, Steve. Oh, uh, what'd you do with my copy? I tore it up. I don't get you, Freddy. I guess that proves you're not as smart as you're supposed to be. Well, let me get this straight. I don't know why you're having so much trouble, Steve. It's simple. I'm packing you in. You don't know what you're saying. Why, when I find you... All right, you, don't little... give me that tired routine about all you did for me. You got paid for that and paid plenty. From here on, little Freddy, don't split with anybody. Well, listen, Freddy. Sorry, pal, I haven't time. I got no... Come in. Hello, boys. What are you doing here, Vincent? Keep your shirt on, Steve. I just want to talk to you, boy. You're making a mistake, Mr. Vincent. Am I? Yeah. I'm not his boy. Oh, really? Oh, really. As of 12 o'clock tonight. Then if I want to discuss business, who do I talk to? Me? All right, Steve. Would you mind giving us a little privacy? I'm staying here. Buzz. You want me, Mr. Vincent? Uh, yeah, would you take this gentleman for a little stroll? I think some fresh air would do him good. Okay, Steve, you heard him. Let go of me. Come on, friend. Unless you want that fresh air to go right through you. All right, Freddy. I'll be seeing you. Don't bother, Steve. It won't do you any good. <laughs> okay, Mr. Vincent. What's on your mind? You are, Freddy. Night and day. Well, that's very flattering. What do I owe it to? You're coming fight with the champ. Oh, that? Yeah, that. How do you think you'll do against him? What's your guess? Oh, I think if you wanted to, you could take Kenny. <laughs> You're not kidding. I said, 
If you wanted to. Well, why shouldn't I? I think the crown would look real good on me. I think a hundred grand would look even better. Oh, meaning you want me to take a dive? Meaning just that. You know, Mr. Vincent, I like a guy who don't beat around the bush. When do I get the dough? Right after the fire. Oh, no. I don't do business that way. When would you want it? Tonight. Okay, Freddie, you got yourself a deal. I'll have Buzz bring it over to your apartment. Fair enough. I guess that does it. Take care of yourself, kid. Mm -hmm. Keep punching. Uh, you too, Freddie. Uh, just be careful where and when. Let me talk to Ace Richards, please. Speak. Oh, hello, Ace. This is Freddie Lane. Oh, hi, Freddie. What's up? Uh, this is strictly QT, Ace. Ever know me to talk? Well, I'd like to place a little bet on my fight next Friday night with the champ. How much? A hundred grand. Is that what you call a little bet? Look, if you don't want it, Ace, I'll get somebody else. No, no, no. I'll cover it, Freddie. All right. Lay the whole bunch on me to beat Kenny by a knockout. <laughs> like this business, Freddie. I don't like it one bit. All right. Now, what's the matter, Ruth? Steve Douglas did a lot for you. You can't toss him over like that. You need him. I need Steve like I need a hole in my head. <laughs> he should have seen his face when I told him we were through. <laughs> I thought the guy was going to drop dead. That's not funny. Uh, can't expect you to see the joke, Ruth. After all, you're both in the same boat. What's that supposed to mean? It's where you get off, baby. What? Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize this was my house. No, you had it right the first time, Ruthie. We're through. Oh, please, Freddie. I'm in no mood for any more of your clowning tonight. Now, what's the matter with all you people, anyway? A fella tells you something right away, you think he's kidding. But you can't be serious. Go on, get. Now, darling, listen to Are me. Are you going to walk a drop that cross your heart? <laughs> now, beat it. All right, Freddie. Now, don't get so familiar. Next time we meet, remember, it's Mr. Lane. That clock right, Buzz? No, it's about five minutes slow, Mr. Vincent. Oh, then you better turn on the radio. If you don't mind my asking... How much dough is your syndicate laying on this match? Enough. Is that the right station? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is now. And in just a moment, we will bring you this blow-by-blow -blow account of the first championship fight held in New York in two years. It's a 15-round match between Dan Kenny and the challenger, Freddie Lane. They're in the center of the ring now, getting their final instructions from the referee. Both boys look in great shape. Now they've just gone back to their corners, and there's the bell for the first round. Both fighters come out of their corners swinging. Uh -huh. The champ paints with the left and then tries another left, which catches Freddie going away. Why well, don't they cut out the act and get down a bit? Right, but Freddie dances back. Lane must feel that there's plenty of time to show it. What am I saying? Freddie just brought up a roundhouse that caught Kenny right on the jaw. Boy, shut up. And now Lane throws a right and a left and still another left. Oh, that one hurt. The champ staggers and Freddie moves in for the kill. Hold on, I'm your jerk. Kenny is trying to clinch now, but Lane won't let him. Freddie brings up a right from the basement. And Kenny is down. He's badly hurt. The referee is bending over him. Just listen to that crowd. Get up, Kenny. Come on, you bum. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's all over, folks. There's a new champion in New York tonight. Turn it off. And his name is... Well, what do you think, Buzz? Gee, Mr. Vincent, what can I say? You're sure you gave that hundred grand to Freddie Lane? May I drop dead if I didn't? Okay, Buzz, that's all I wanted to know. I can take it from here. Who's there? All right, Mike, open up. Who is it? Open up and find out. Steve Douglas. I surprised you, didn't I? In no small way. 
Well, considering you're the one and only Falcon, that's no easy trick. Am I disturbing you? No, no. Nothing I like better than entertaining company at three in the morning. It won't take much of your time. Can you get me a gun? Can I what? Get me a gun. You know, a bang bang. One that can't be traced. Why? I got a little exterminating job I want to do. You're drunk. Sure I am. Don't worry, I won't miss. I figured to get real close to him before I let him have it. Who are you talking about? Freddie Lane, the new champ at Sue. Are you out of your mind? I don't think so. The way I see it, so many guys hate Freddie, the cops will never pin it on me. Especially if you can get me a gun that can't be traced. <laughs> You're crazy. You think I'm kidding, don't you? No, that's what scares me. Now, look, Steve, why don't you bunk here on the sofa and we'll talk this over tomorrow morning? Nah. I'm going to get him tonight. Look, I think you better sober up. You mean you won't get me a gun? That's exactly what I mean. You're a swell pal you turned out to be. Okay, if that's the way you feel, I got other friends. Now, hold it. You're staying here. <laughs> Who's going to make me? You know, Steve, you're leaving yourself wide open for a crack there. There's no reason why you shouldn't get it. No. And good night, sweetheart. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Come on, baby. Drink up. There's plenty more where this came from. You realize you're talking to the new champ? Oh, I think you're wonderful, Mr. Lane. <laughs> Call me Freddy, baby. <laughs> All right, Freddy. But hadn't we better get back to the party? Ah, what's our rush? Told him I had to go up to my room to get my bags packed. Well, there they are. Oh, sugar, you ain't gonna wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm grabbing a 12 o'clock plane for Seattle. Uh... How'd you like to go with me, eh? Well, I don't know. Hey, you better make up your mind fast, baby. We've got 15 minutes to make the airport. That must be the boy I've been waiting for. All right, just a second. I'm coming. Well, if it is... Oh! <laughs> Sergeant Corbett around here. I think so. Listen, you lame brain. What's the idea of getting me down here at this hour? Well, I had a little news for you. I didn't want to trust to the telephone. Freddie Lane's been murdered. Is that supposed to be a scoop? It's in all the papers. Yeah, but the papers didn't say anything about you entertaining Freddie's ex-manager early this morning. But you mean Steve Douglas? Uh-huh. According to our information, he went up to sea at 3 a.m. So? So, where is he now? You tell me. Okay. Your elevator boy brought him down about five. Well? Well, the jury might think, inasmuch as Freddy was killed at six, there might be a connection. Uh, where's Steve now? Winslow, send Douglas in here. Hello, Steve. Hi, Mike. Don't look so good for the home team, does it? Now, don't you worry. We'll have you out of here in no time. Who are you kidding? Look, Corbett. You mind if I talk to him alone? I certainly do. You don't think I'm letting you alone with a murderer? You're talking through your hat. Steve didn't kill Freddy. Funny he can't supply an alibi. All right, Steve. Tell him what you did after you left my place. I walked around. Where? I don't remember. You don't remember. Has he been identified by the girl? What girl? According to the papers, there was a cutie in Lane's apartment when he was gunned. We haven't found her yet. Well, let me congratulate you. You think you can do better? Well, I certainly couldn't do any worse. Wait a minute, Mike. You got any idea who this girl is? Maybe. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. Sure. Why don't we make a date now? Suppose we meet at Sing Sing on the day Steve goes to the chair. That makes it nice and definite. Back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Mike had his little talk with Sergeant Corbett. And now as we find Mike, he is making the rounds. Just a second. Yes. Hello, Ruthie. I beg your pardon. You don't remember me, do you? No. Well, I'm Mike Waring. Steve Douglas introduced me one night after one of Freddie's fights. You certainly pick a strange time to renew old acquaintances. Well, I might have been around sooner, but I kept thinking of Freddy's left jab. All right, Mr. Waring, what do you want? Well, may I come in, Angel? I have a feeling you can say all you have to right there. OK. 
Okay. Who killed Lane? How would I know? You were up in his room last night when he was murdered. Now, who told you that? Well, it's just a matter of simple arithmetic. You were Freddie's girl, and that naturally followed. You'd be doing some celebrating after his victory. You better go back to school. You don't know your addition. Hmm? The last time I saw Freddie was two days ago when we agreed to disagree. Oh, so you're another member of the club, huh? What kind of a crack is that? Well, Freddie used to change girls as often as he did his shirts. So? So maybe that agreement to disagree was all on one side. And if he gave you the old heave-ho... Yeah? Uh, that would make you a very logical suspect. <laughs> That's very amusing. Well, you've got an overdeveloped sense of humor. Maybe I have, but the joke's on you. You wouldn't happen to know what time Freddie was shot. I would. Approximately 6.05. I suppose you have an alibi for the time. Mm-hmm. And it's supported by half the police force of New York. Meaning? Meaning at 6.05, I was in jail for reckless driving. There's Ace now, Mr. Vincent. Where, Buzz? Getting out of that cab. All right. Put the pulls away. Now, give him a chance to open his door. Okay, let's go. Uh, hello, Ace. What's it? It's all right. It's only your best customer. Mind if we come in? Well, it's awful late, Vincent. And the longer you argue, the longer, the later it gets. Shut the door, Buzzer. What's this all about? I just want a little information. Mike Waring been around to see you yet? Waring? No, why should he? He's working for Steve Douglas. He'll probably ask you the names of some of the big losers on the fight last night. So? So, when he does ace, I'd like you to forget all about the bundle I dropped. Okay, Vincent. Mom's the word. Not that I don't trust you, Ace, but, uh, where do you keep your records? I tell you, I won't say a word. Uh, sure, but Waring's awfully persuasive, and you might spill without meaning it. But, of course, if your records were destroyed, no matter what you told him, there wouldn't be any evidence. Where are they? Wouldn't you like to know? Sure. That's why I asked. Keep your hands off me. I asked you a question, Ace. And the only way you'll get the answer is over my dead body. Well, that's the way you want it. That's the way you'll get it, because I aim to please. <laughs> Take it easy, Ace. You want some more water? Please. There you are. You better let me call a doctor. No. I'll be all right, Mike. You feel up to tell me the rest of it? That's all I know. After Vincent got tired of bouncing me around, he turned me over to Buzz. <laughs> Cute kid, that Buzz. So you told him where your books were? Yeah. Then what happened? That's all I remember. They must have passed out. When I came to, they were gone. I called you. Wish you were able to do it sooner. How much did Vincent lose on the fight? Twenty grand. Is that all? I heard he spread it around. Better around a quarter of a million in Las Vegas. Well, that still doesn't give Vincent a motive to kill Freddy. Don't it? No, if a gambler ever tried to knock off all the people he lost dough on, the cemeteries would be loaded. The thing I don't understand is Vincent's bad judgment. What do you mean? Well, Freddy figured to take Kenny just the way he did. Doesn't add up for the smart money to be bet the other way. Unless Vincent thought Freddy was going to take a dive. Why should Freddy do that? He had a big bet with me that he'd take Kenny. How big? Hundred grand. Oh, then that proves it. Where would Freddy get that kind of dough? He didn't hit the big time until four months ago. And you think... I think Sergeant Corbett might very profitably have a little talk with Georgie Vincent. What floor do we get off on, Mike? The fourth. I don't know why I'm humoring you with this. Because you know I'm right, Sergeant. Vincent paid Freddy to take a dive, and when Freddy crossed him, he knocked him off. I suppose Vincent has an alibi. Well, he probably has. Everybody has an alibi except my client. No, this is our floor. Now, where do we go? Uh, the apartment over there. What do you mean everybody has an alibi except your client? I'll tell you about that later. You better keep your gun handy, because if I know Vincent... He... Yeah? Uh, we'd like to... Well, well, hello, Ruthie. Who's she? Well, that's right, you haven't met. Uh, Sergeant uh, Ruthie Kent. She and Freddie used to be closer than two minutes, so you can understand my surprise. What are you doing here, Angel? None of your business. 
Miss Benson, do No. Mind if we look? Yes, I certainly do. Ah, you know that's not going to stop us. Well, how about this? Uh, you better put away the gun, Ruthie. Corbett doesn't approve of women carrying firearms. Stop! Stop it! You're breaking my wrist. Come on, baby, drop it. All right, Mike. I got the gun. You can stop wrestling now. Oh, that's a shame. I'm just beginning to enjoy it. Well, the load. Never mind. Did you do that? No. Did she do what? Why do you think she didn't want us to come in here? Look behind that sofa. Dead? Yeah. I didn't kill Mr. Vincent. I swear I didn't. Who says you did? You nuts. Because I believe she didn't kill Vincent? Well, she didn't. I can prove it. How? By the body, Sergeant. You see, that's not Vincent. That's his boy, Buzz. <laughs> Miss Kent, what have you got to say for yourself? I came here to see Mr. Vincent, and when I walked in, I found that... that that man. What do you want with Vincent, anyway? I thought maybe he could give me some advice. <laughs> I got frightened when you came around to see me before. What made you pick him as a father confessor? Well, I don't know many people in New York. I heard Freddie mention Vincent once as being a smart operator. He was the only one I could think of. You certainly couldn't have made a worse choice. What do you think, Mike? Well, for one thing, this clay is my client. I don't see how. Steve Douglas still could have killed Freddie, and she knocked off Buzz. That's not true. I'm inclined to agree with her, Sergeant. I tell you, both these murders are tied up. How? Well, I never thought to ask, but did you come across anything in Freddie's effects that might give us a lead? Not a thing. I went all through his stuff myself. What did you find? A dozen suits, 36 shirts. Well, never mind the haberdashery. Were there any letters? No. The only thing he had in his wallet was a check for 28000 for the fight and about 1700 in cash. Got any more ideas? Uh, yes, I have. I think I can explain the whole thing now. Well? Suppose Buzz double-crossed Vincent. Quit ad-libbing. I tell you, it makes sense. Ace Richards told me that Vincent only bet 20 grand with him on the fight. So what? So that's peanuts to a guy like Vincent. I suppose he gave Buzz a lot more money to bet, and Buzz stuck it in his pocket and promptly forgot about it. How would Vincent find out? Well, that's easy. When he got hold of Ace's records, he'd see immediately that Buzz hadn't bet all the dough he was supposed to. Wouldn't that give Vincent the motive to kill him? Sure it would. There's only one trouble with your theory. What's that? I'll bet a year's salary it never happened that way. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Fifteen minutes have passed. Since Mike Waring advanced his theory on the murder of Freddie Lane. Uh, and now at Ace Richards' apartment, the Mike and Ace are receiving the results of Mike's effort Same to thing, confirm huh? it. All right, pal. Thanks a lot. Well, it was a bad guess, Mike. My first estimate was right. Buzz placed close to a quarter of a million bucks for Vincent. Well, there goes a perfectly good hunch down the sewer. You don't seem too upset about it. Well, to tell you the truth, Ace, I half expected it. If the possibility of checking up on Buzz occurred to me, it must have occurred to Vincent, too. Well, what are you going to do now? Take stock again. Hey, isn't it possible that you've overlooked the best prospect of all? I don't know who. Steve Douglas. Just because he's your client doesn't mean he couldn't be guilty. Oh, I realize that, but even granting that Steve killed Freddy for revenge, he couldn't possibly have killed Buzz. He was in jail at the time. And if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that both murders were committed by the same party. Yeah? Uh-huh. I'm convinced that some member of our little group benefited financially from Freddy's murder. I can't see who. Well, that's because your approach is wrong. Now, if you apply the test of who stood the most to gain, one person sticks out like the proverbial sore thumb. Who? You. Uh, cut the clowning, Mike. What makes you think I'm clowning? You better get a bet down on yourself, Ace. You're a sure thing to finish in the chair. <laughs> tell you how grateful I am, Mike. Oh, forget it, Ruth. I don't forget things like that. I want you to send me a bill. Look, you don't owe me a dime. Steve Douglas is my client. The fact that you were cleared is incidental. Then Ace Richards also killed Buzz, hmm? Yes, but that was just window dressing. The all-important thing was the murder of Freddie Lane. Well, what made you pick on Ace? He had the most practical motives. I can understand that now, but what put you on the right track? Remember what Sergeant Corbett said they found in Freddie's effects? Mm-hmm. There was a big check from the boxing promoter and about 1700 in cash. Exactly. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, there should have been a lot more. If Freddie bet 100 grand on himself with Ace, 
What happened to all the money he won? Hmm? Well, common sense will tell you that a boy like Freddie could never blow town until he had every penny coming to him. Yeah, but isn't it possible somebody might have robbed the body afterwards? Well, then why did he leave the 1700 bucks the cops found? It was in cash. And I haven't met a burglar yet who would turn up his nose at that. So that rules out your theory of the anonymous thief. Mm, and the answer must be Ace never paid him off. Only in lead, Angel. The same way he gave it to Buzz. Well, this has been very charming, Mike. Uh, am I going to see you again? That raises quite a problem. On one hand, you did put up a big battle for me. Mm-hmm. You managed to lick almost the entire New York police force single-handed. Yeah, you're quite a guy to have in your corner when the going gets rough. Then where's your problem, Angel? Well, I've just finished tangling with one fighter, and one such experience is enough for a lifetime. Good night, Mr. Waring. Thank <laughs> you.